so religion is a symptom of mental illness and it's also a form of mental illness of course and it causes coldness and disconnect from the other it causes dualism it causes demonizations of others other beings and I've, I've seen this so so many times people are very susceptible to also a suggestion of from any kind of market psychologist who will implement something like this into a a Hollywood movie where people when they come out of the movie will think that whoever was being demonized or slandered whatever demographic or animal then they come out of that film thinking that this group or animal is an anim enemy and um, they feel like they want to exterminate that group or that type of animal and that's a very deliberate attempt by the corporate agenda, for example, to slander entire species of animals in order to get people to be okay with the cattle ranchers, for example, shooting wolves from airplanes. That's how far this goes. But people don't notice that this is actually, this is a political propaganda that was woven into a Hollywood movie or entire Hollywood movies that are pure corporate propaganda in themselves that were actually written in order to bring out a corporate propaganda to bring out a slander against an, an animal species or against a specific demographic. Think about this for a moment. These kind of things are happening subconsciously. Not, I'm not, not saying subliminally. That too, they do all kinds of tricks. Okay. They know how to trick people. They know how to play with people's psychology. They link up things. They have very specific, very, very good working techniques that they make a whole movie with. So that's why Hollywood, that's why they're not independent. They're, they are attached to the corporate agenda. Okay. So maybe not every movie is set out to be a propaganda, but the one against the wolves certainly is. The, the whole thing was written for that purpose. Maybe written together with market psychologists such as Richard Berman and read about Richard Berman. He is very well known for that. Okay. Particularly known in among the animal rights activists because he has targeted them and slandered them nonstop throughout many, many years targeted Ingrid Newkirk, slandered in Ingrid Newkirk to people where I meet random people that when I mention PETA and Ingrid Newkirk that completely fly off the handle because they believe this propaganda against them hook, line and sinker okay, without ever investigating it any further. So Richard Berman is behind that. And he, he was paid a lot of money to slander Peter because obviously Ingrid Newkirk and Peter have educated the public and they 
gathered more and more support from people who see that what they're doing and how much they're helping. They have become so power they have become so large that they have become quite an influencer, quite um they have quite an influencing power now, uh, in a good way, in the right direction. They are educating the public. So, and they don't trick people, you know. They just, they give the facts on what's happening behind closed doors, be behind cement walls, in factory farms, the gruesome horror that's happening there. And the majority of people will go against them because so many people are in some way financially benefiting from the exploitation of animals. And they want to look the other way because they want to act like, oh, I haven't seen it, you know, the money is good. You know, on cost of all these animals. So this is a life that I cannot live, for example. I could not. And it wouldn't matter what I pass up. I wouldn't matter what wealth or opportunities I might pass up throughout my life and have already because I put compassion over opportunities. Compassion is love. Okay, I put that on the highest pedestal. Love is the ruler of the infinite cosmos. Love is the blue god. Love is the infinite cosmos. That is the highest energy. Okay, that is the energy that makes things well. But people with their unempowerment mind states, they accept any kind of... There are people that kill for a dollar. There are people that kill for fifty dollars. There are people that kill for a million dollars. Almost everyone has their price. Price tag on something. So someone will say, oh, no, that's unethical. I'll never do it. Here, what if I offer you 10 million? Will you do it? And then they go, hmm, let me sleep over all night on this. Right there. Okay, that's not love. Okay. I mean, just because your price tag is higher to do an unethical thing, that doesn't make that person in any way compassionate. The moment someone is willing to sacrifice the wellness of other living being, beings, for example, the frogs, there are entire frog areas out there in the, in the Midwest. There are swamp areas that, are, that used to be so amazing. There is a YouTube video, I think a 10-hour frog recording somewhere in the Midwest. I don't know, Ohio or something, or Mississippi, bullfrogs and all kinds of amazing frogs. And I commented under that person's video, and then I find out from someone that this entire area doesn't exist anymore. The, they exterminated all the frogs after the, someone had made this frog recording video, you know, of this pristine environment that it used to be. Yeah. The oil industry got a hold of it. They went in and they started fracking. This destroyed all the frogs and the wild animals in that area. So, and when I come in with compassion into this world, and when I tell people about the ugly truths. They get mad at me. Not mad. They don't get mad at the actual predators, the oil industry or whatever. It's too inconvenient for them to get mad at them because they kind of 
are sort of linked to their monetary system, to their corruption cycle, corruption ring, corruption network, right? Some are interlinked with it, so they'll conveniently go against me, the compassionate person. But compassion does happen in a world of coldness. And the majority of humans are corrupt and cold because they're unempowered and they think that if they don't do it, that someone else will. And they better take this now because they think there's scarcity and that they need to grab this, this or that now and they don't care on what cost. And that's a real, real impoverished mindset to function like this. Okay. That's not how we make the world a better place. When people are just blindly grabbing things, opportunities or jobs or whatever it is, a rich husband who has people murdered and they look the other way because rich husband gives them a good lifestyle. That's not the sugar daddy I want. Okay, I say thank you no to that. I can only hang out with people. It's nice to have a sugar daddy. It's nice to have someone who cares about you and gives you things but not on cost of other living beings. Okay. I'd rather die than live my life in any way on cost of other living beings. There's a there's a minimal there's a minimal damage that one does just by existing. I step on bugs sometimes unknowingly. I sit on the lawn, might might accidentally sit on an ant, right? Yeah, so I always get these arguments from people coming right at me with this, but you sit on an ant while he himself wears fur or murders someone. He will accuse me of sitting on, on an ant. Or just putting this out there for people to understand. This is happening all the time, these conversations. Okay. So, yes, I exist. Um, I will probably do something just because I exist, some incidental damage that I cause, you know, I eat plants that causes obviously a plant to be cut. We have to eat plants, of course, and I, I refuse to eat a sentient being. I don't eat any animal products, okay, so I live my life, I really walk my talk here. So if anyone wants to come after me and say, yeah, but you use the sewage system. No, I don't. Okay. We do composting. We put the nutrients back into the land. Okay. On a small scale, obviously, just in our garden. I want to see that happening worldwide. Okay. So compassion in a cold-hearted world that compassion starts with me, Nicola, okay? And it starts with you, too, in the same way. It starts with you. Say no to the mafia boss. Say no to getting a loan from some shady person. Say no to the drugs. Say no to exploitation. Say no to chopping off trees. Say no to your addiction cycle that is on cost of others in a real bad way. You have no idea what drugs cause, what suffering drug use causes in the world, the implications of that. Okay, So say no to all of this and go into your own mind. Go into meditation and free yourself from all of this and become a kind person. Okay, then we can make the world better. All or every single single person is responsible for it. So you guys take care. Bye bye.